Another day of rage in the Middle East as protesters confronted government forces in Iran, Bahrain, Yemen and Libya. Where anti-government protests initially broke out yesterday in the second largest city of Benghazi. Police fired rubber bullets to push back crowds who were calling for the ouster of Muammar Gaddafi, Libya's ruler for 41 years. Bahrain saw its third day of demonstrations. CBS Radio News reporter Tula Vlahu is there. Streams of people, they're just walking, children, women, men. The traffic naturally has come to a standstill and people have left their cars on sidewalks and they're walking to the square. It's quite extraordinary. In Tehran, government supporters confronted mourners at a funeral for a protester who was killed on Monday. And in Yemen, there were clashes between pro- and anti-government groups outside the university in the capital Sana'a and in the city of Aden. In Egypt, the army did not fire on protesters and ultimately they persuaded Mubarak to leave. As these protests spread around the region, one of the most decisive factors in each country will be the loyalty of the security forces. So far, military and police forces appear to be staying loyal to their governments. But Ahmed Galal, who runs a Middle East think tank, believes change is now inevitable across the region. I know it's not easy and it's going to take some time. Uh, I know there may be small setbacks here and there, but fundamentally and increasingly more countries are going to become more open and more democratic. And the protesters are learning from each other. A Facebook message is currently going around Libya telling people to gather in mosques and march on city squares, just like the Egyptians used Facebook to coordinate their protests three weeks ago. Terry McCarthy, CBS News, Cairo.